the Wits Up Kona coverage, Lizzie B. Steffi H. <laughs> Let's not make that one stick. Thank you very much. Too late, too late. <laughs> um, how are you doing? It's, it's almost, well, I guess you call it race week. It's your final race. You're about to retire. How, how are all the feels, the emotions? Yeah, um, throw it up there. There's a whole lot of feels going on. Um, but yeah, really good feels. Um, yeah, just excited to be here. Sort of, you know, feeling everything for the last time. Yeah. You know, like this last taper, you know, a lot of my last key sessions. Yeah. And it's like the last time ever. So even when you're going into races, it's, you know, it's nice to do your last this, your last that, your last whatever. Um, but to be thinking I'm actually doing them for the very last time and I'm yeah. done with those hard, hard training blocks for the rest of my life. And, um, yeah. yeah. And even just thinking about how it's going to feel walking, walking, no, hopefully running down a <laughs> Leahy, <laughs> running down a Leahy. Um, yeah, just kind of gives me goosebumps thinking about it. So, yeah. um, try not to think too deeply cause I'm like, I still got a job to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, really embracing it all and enjoying yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you, it's at the very end, and I know you say that it's you've got a job to do, but at this point in time, I imagine it doesn't really feel so much like a job now. Yeah, you're right. Um, it sort of just feels like um, the cherry on top of you yeah. know a career that I've loved and you know a passion that I've been able to luckily enough to follow for so long, um, and to be able to finish it off in this race yeah. is is really what I you know why I've pushed so hard all year to try and qualify. Yeah. Um, so to be here, I feel really excited and lucky to be here. Yeah. Um, didn't have the smoothest journey to get here either. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's just um, one of those. Yeah, I'm stoked to be here and let's see what I can do. And it doesn't. I don't feel as much pressure as I've yeah. potentially felt in previous years. I, you know, I want to represent my sponsor as well and you know have a good outing. But I don't really have anything riding on it either. It's yeah. not for me. Um, you know, there's no kind of qualification for next year or sponsorship, future sponsorship here, um, riding on it. So for me, it's just a free crack and just go out and do, yeah, do my best. And and, and that's the thing in Kona that I, I imagine not not everyone knows about, but Kona, obviously, it's the biggest race of, of the calendar for long distance athletes. But it's also the place where most people are re-signing contracts um, schmoozing with new potential sponsors and everything so it's it's not just race day that's big here in Kona for, for the pro athlete there's all the other obligations that surround it as well that makes it a bit of a, a circus for most athletes yeah absolutely it's a bit of a pressure cooker like that mm-hmm. and um, yeah it is like you say right around this time you know this is the, the clincher whether you you know you get signed or you get as much money as you want for next year or you end up with nothing at all which yeah. is you know like it's it's not that that many pro athletes that you know really make a good living out of this so yeah we all know that you know this is important to us and sometimes even if you've had good races for the rest of the year um if you don't have a good kona result your sponsors don't really care yeah but, um so yeah it is it is a bit of a pressure cooker at this time of year <laughs> yeah. Can be. yeah so it's nice not to worry about that yeah i'm not, going to race day yeah exactly cool. just enjoying it. i've got um some of my family here and yeah my husband always with me my little daughter and my mum and sister are here so um yeah yeah just enjoying it and yeah trying to embrace everything that comes with it mm-hmm. i love it now previously here this is this is your fourth time racing here yeah. we were just discussing that earlier but it feels like you've actually been here a lot longer than that but I think it's just because you've been in the sport for quite for quite some time you know coming from an ITU background and then moving into the long distance but your first time here you came third on debut then a tenth and then another third Mm -hmm. compared to those so there's some pretty solid results I know you probably weren't too happy with the tenth in terms of you know you've been third before Mm -hmm. but how are you with your body mindset compared to those years um, tracking going into race day? Um, I think if I'm completely honest with myself, the last few years um, have been really, really inconsistent for me as far as yeah. training goes. And, um, you know, I, I know what it takes to be a pro athlete and I, I know that there's probably a little bit lacking in my preparation. Yeah. But I also, what I have learned this year from racing is I've gone into a few races this year, what, what I felt completely underdone and still managed to have some pretty um, competitive results, you know. Yeah. So, you know, surprising myself, still learning at this age, 
Um, so I don't have the preparation that I had leading into 13, 14 and 15. I definitely don't. But the last two months since Trimble, which was my last Ironman, um, seven, eight weeks ago, um, has been good. So yeah. I'm coming coming good at the right time. Let's just put Excellent. it that way. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to keep harping on about the fact that you're retiring. But... <laughs> One thing that I think you've got a special advantage, or no, I should say we have a special advantage in interviewing you is because it doesn't really matter if you upset people now, so now, because you're retiring. <laughs> so now you can actually give us, a ve- not that you've never not given us an honest answer or anything, but some people tend to give a bit of a fluffy answer when they're talking about other athletes mm-hmm. and who to look out for and everything because they're keeping the cards close to their chest. But I reckon you've got nothing to lose now. Mm-hmm. So you can really give me... The, the, the ins and outs of how you see this race panning out, what are people's weaknesses, where do you think um, where do you think the game might be changed? Because let's be honest, Daniela Reef is going to be a very, very, very tough, very, very, very tough athlete to beat. But yeah. there's, people are kidding themselves if they don't think that. Is she unbeatable? Uh, no. Hang on, I have to think that. Sure, she, people can beat her for sure, but it's going to be a tough task. How do you see the, the race panning out? Um, yeah, like you said, I think Danny's in the form of her career and, you know, she was already the best at yeah. long course. So definitely really hard to beat. And I think if Danny has a halfway decent day, she's going to win. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's sort of what we saw last year. She didn't have, her, you know, a really particularly good day and she still managed to get it done. Um, in saying that, Lucy has really stepped up, like, yeah. super impressive last year and then has you know taken it to that next level this year um, she's she's the one I'd say with the bucket loads of potential I, you know I don't think she's at her she's probably nowhere near her, her prime yet yeah. um, but you know she's probably the next one knocking on the door and I'm not saying anything that you guys don't know but um, yeah she's just that untapped potential you know what can happen like I think yesterday she swam on Josh Amberger's yeah. feet for the lower swim and yeah, so that, you know she's going to have a pretty good gap out of the water, which you know yeah. she did last year. So she's sort of going into the race like last year, but her, I'd say her bike and her run have come on a little. Um, so yeah, look, if Danny does falter, you know Lucy's not going to be far behind, or you know yeah. she, she might actually be in front. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, look, the rest of the field. One of the reasons I'm excited to be here is I think the field this year is like one of the best. I think probably the best that's been. Yeah. And no disrespect back to previous fields because you know we've got some incredible champions in the past and some of them you know still racing this year but um, I just think we've got some real depth this year yeah um, you've got most of last year's top 10 you know Sarah Crowley's on form Heather Jackson's on form Kasia Sali yeah. you know you can list them off they've all been racing fantastic all year um, and then you bring in some of the rookies this year mm-hmm. which are exciting um, yeah I think I've sort of mentioned this in some other interviews, but there's probably five women that I can think of who are rookies who I think are like podium potential. Yeah. So, you know, if they have their, their perfect day, one of those one of those five, um, so the people I'm thinking is Sarah True, yep. um, Annie Hark, um, Teresa Adams, the girl oh, yeah. on Cairns, who yeah. I think is probably like flying a little bit under the radar despite having that fantastic racing Cairns. Yeah, yeah, she's definitely, we spoke to her yesterday, definitely under the radar. Under the radar, That's yeah. such a talent. Yeah, and like she d- did everything strong in Cairns, swim, yeah. bike and run, and um, yeah, so definitely a talent. It was only her second Ironman and mm. set the course record there. Yeah. So, you know, she beat Sarah Crowley's record and Crowley yeah. was third last year. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, there's some really exciting women racing. Hella Fredrickson, you know, Smash long course worlds, ITU long course worlds, and um, has had a little hiccup recently. But I think oh, I know from personal experience, you can kind of afford to if you've had a good year of yeah. running behind you. If you have sort of a run injury that's not you know not months, not lingering for months, it can yeah. you can almost be oh, okay the rest of nine months. So yeah, her and um, even Emma Pallant, who's um, on my team, my BMC yeah. team. I think Em's probably maybe a year or a couple of years away from really reaching out Ironman potential, figuring out the heat and whatnot, but she's, you know, super talented as well. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's five, there's, there's, there's more in that field. Yeah. yeah. We went down the list, but yeah, it's exciting. Really exciting. Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic race. Hopefully I get outside to actually watch some of it. <laughs> I'll, I'll actually pick your brain about tips about watching from the sidelines with the youngster oh, yeah. later on. But oh, yeah. I haven't done that. 
<laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I, was I was just thinking. I didn't come last year. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was like a couple of months old and I opted out. Yeah. Never <laughs> come to Kona with a tuna <laughs> frog. <It's> stupid. <laughs> um, okay, so race day, um, obviously a packed field. What? How do you think your day is going to pan out? You have, like you said, you, you've struggled with a bit of an injury. Well, sorry, you've struggled with injury and you, you haven't got the run miles that you normally would, but you've pulled out some great races this year despite that. How do you see your day panning out? And I don't mean, you know, I'm going to have a good swim. Mm -hmm. You're going to be in that lead pack, I imagine, not with you, Lucy Charles and Lauren Brandon, but in that lead pack, I imagine. I'm hoping. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I'm hoping there's um, some of the names I mentioned earlier, Sarah True, Hella Fredrickson, um, you know, there's Meredith and there's a bunch of others sort of front pack swimmers yeah. in any normal race, but then yeah. you have Lauren Brandon and Lucy. So that put Lauren Brandon and Lucy up the road and then, you know, I'd say there's going to be a gap to another main group, you know, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be a part of that group. Yeah. Um, anyone's guess how long that group will stay together. Mm -hmm. I'd say Danny will probably be out of the water in that group. She's swam well at 70.3 worlds. She's been swimming well all year. Yeah. So yeah, anyone's guess, you know, when Danny decides to go and drop the hammer and yeah. does it splinter the group? Does anyone decide to go with her on that suicide train or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's, um, you know, anyone's guess, but you know, hoping to set up my day with a good swim and be out in that group. Um, you know, I think I'm riding well. I've ridden well on the races I've done this year and, um, you know, want to just race a smart race. Because I'm riding well, I don't want to go and, you know, sit on the front of the group and, yeah. um, you know, blow myself up so I can't show whatever run form I do have. Um, but, yeah, look, it, it would be good to have a working group that can, you know, everyone takes some turns and potentially stay ahead of some of those faster runners behind us. Um, yeah. But in saying that, Anne Hive, she's a, also a pretty good swimmer and, you know, she could be in that group too and yeah. she's got... Would she run one fifteen in South Africa? Oh my god, it's ridiculous. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, look at that. and you know Sarah True, um, Hella, they're all fantastic runners too. So yeah, yeah. look, it's hard to say how it's going to play out, but um, yeah, yeah, hoping to be somewhere in that front group, use my experience, the fact that I like racing in the heat, and yeah. um, you know just try and race a steady race and have have a result I'm proud of. I'd yeah. love to slot into that top ten. Yeah, um, whether you know. Whether that happens or not, I just want to have a race that I'm proud of and yeah. I can retire somewhat content with yeah. a decent performance. Speaking of that retirement, in 10, 20 years, how would you like the triathlon community, so the, so the youngsters coming up who have heard of Lizzie B, how would you like to re be remembered as a, as a triathlete? Oh, um, I think... It's, I, like the main things is that you know I want to be remembered for someone that raced with integrity and you know potentially just went about things with a smile was friendly and yeah. um yeah that side of things you know I think results come and go and you know Kona is on every year and right now it feels like everything but um you know results are forgotten and you're sort of probably most remembered for the way you conduct yourself and that sort of thing and yeah. you know probably your real interactions like face-to-face -face interactions that you have with people um, yeah. I think probably in the end I mean more than much else yeah yeah I'm pretty sure most people will think of you like that oh. or do already do think of you like that thanks then I I've got you fooled <laughs> <laughs> I've spent time with you well at Kona outside of Kona and I said to you a couple of years ago when I came out and I was doing a bit of training with you you you're a very chill <laughs> athlete compared to all the pro athletes I speak to you're very chill. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> but, um, okay, finally, what's on for the rest of the year then for you? The rest of the year? So Noosa Try, three weeks after Kona, is just kind of a little bit of a fun race. Yeah. It's like a lot of you guys are Aussies watching, so um, you know what Noosa is all about. It's a whole lot of fun, really good party. A lot of my sort of Aussie friends and crew will be there. So, um, yeah, just a race that, you know, this race that we see means a lot to me and I want to go out on this race. But then I also want to have a race where I don't feel pressure at all and just yeah. can um, chill and really enjoy it. And, you know, it's over by 8 in the morning and then yeah, yeah, you're just hanging out in beautiful Noosa for the yeah. rest of the weekend. So um, there's that in three weeks. And then um, we're going to be a bit homeless, actually. So <laughs> we're building a house, which um, won't be ready to December. So we moved out of our old one before we came over here. And so, yeah, we're just a bit homeless for November, but that's all right. We're just going to be... Gypsies for a little while, might go to Bali or 
might yeah. go stay with my parents or Glenn's parents or visit some visit you can come we'll just crash with you Frankie and Brett Excellent. and Melbourne. yeah plenty of room Excellent. <laughs> so yeah just a little bit of that and then hopefully our house is ready December and um yeah that's sort of northern New South Wales basically the Gold Coast we're building so um it'll be exciting to move into our new house awesome yeah and then as far as um like future plans yep yeah um, nothing set in stone yet got a few sort of ideas and avenues um gonna potentially coach a little more i do a little oh, bit cool. of coaching now and yeah just haven't felt like i've had the time since having marley just over a year ago to take anyone else on or really grow that yeah um but yeah you know without having myself to worry about so much um yeah, yeah. we'll expand the coaching a little bit help out glenn correct vision with his business a little bit on the sides you know he gets oh, times where he's yeah. completely slammed and could do with a hand so what will you do will you learn to take photos no or? i'll probably do the boring stuff yeah right yeah i think i'll leave him to the creative and the um you know the taking the photos and yeah. all that and I just help him out with the boring stuff to be honest yeah um, which you know anyone that runs a small business knows there's a, a lot of that stuff and yeah. not always that fun but anyway yeah. bit of that um did my school teaching diploma whilst pregnant, so um, I should probably try and use that. <laughs> <laughs> Suppose. No, no I, I really enjoyed the teaching that I did do. So um, yeah, yeah, I would love to do a bit more of that. So, yeah, a few options. Yeah. Spend more time with Marley. Spend more time surfing. <laughs> oh, yes. Can you teach me how to surf? Yeah, we already talked about that, didn't we? Yeah. So we'll get the dads to babysit, and we'll go. We'll hit the waves. Done. Twenty nineteen. <laughs> Sorted. <laughs> Thank you, Lizzie. This won't be the last time that I interview you. We've still got most of the go. Um, <laughs> but I think I can speak for everyone in the triathlon community. You you are an athlete of so much integrity. You, I love watching you race. You're a smart racer. Um, it, just you're, you're a pretty incredible athlete role model. And outside of that, you're a pretty awesome person too. Thanks, Debbie. Yay! <laughs> Hormones! Ha <laughs> <laughs>